Hi, this is Tim Berkwin, host of TraderInterviews.com. This is a recent interview we did with a successful trader. More detailed interviews can be found in the interviews section of the website. While you're listening, click on the premium tab at the top of TraderInterviews.com to find out more. Thanks for taking a look and enjoy this behind-the-scenes look at how one trader makes a great living in the markets. Tim, let's talk a little bit about your just evolution as a trader yourself. How long did it take you to really feel confident in your strategies, confident in your chart reading, that you could you could make a living at this, that you could consistently make money in the markets? Maybe not on a daily basis, but maybe on a monthly or weekly basis. Well, it took a long time. It took a very long time. And I, I think there's a couple of, um, couple of reasons for that. One is that it's taken me a long time to be as comfortable being on the long side as on the short side. And I kind of proved that to myself over these past several months because I was able to do very well on on the long side, particularly with these really beaten up issues that had just gotten creamed during the throes of the bear market. I tended to be really heavily bearishly oriented, which, you know, let's face it, um, until recently wasn't a very good direction to be headed. But I, I think I've kind of broken that disposition so that I can kind of tilt either way. I think the the biggest improvement, the biggest change, which has come from me, is simply having the blog. And there, there's been two reasons for that. One, I've got a very large audience that I sort of have to um, own up to. I mean, I talk about my trading all the time, and whether I win or lose, I kind of have to explain myself. And that puts a certain gravity of self-reflection and consideration into what I'm doing and what I'm trading more than if you're just completely on your own. I think another thing that's been very helpful, not just for me, but for everybody on the blog, is just the community. It's sort of like we've gotten all our brains together and we kind of think together. And so if an idea is good or bad, uh, people sort of chime in with their own thoughts, and it really gets you out of your own head. So you, know, you don't have to write a blog to benefit from this. I think just if, if you participate in a blog, which is respectful and has a lot of smart people involved, that I think has really helped me become more consistently profitable. Do you find that somebody, a commenter maybe on the blog, or you'll mention something, you'll see some certain pattern, and somebody would argue something totally different so that everybody sees the pattern a little bit differently, kind of going back to what we talked about before about tough to see these, these patterns develop. Are there some people that just for whatever reason get it and they, they see it all the time and then others for whatever reason don't? I mean, is there some kind of trait that they have that makes them better than other traders at looking at these things? Well, um, it, it's funny because uh, I've often been surprised at what people consider to be a given pattern. I mean, um, oftentimes I think they're looking through like Picasso's eyes or something because they'll say, this is a such and so pattern. And I'll be like, what are you thinking? <laughs> it's not even close. And so I think that we all you know, have our own kind of goggles through which we see these things. The, the debate really doesn't normally come from charts. Usually people on the blog tend to agree on an interpretation of a chart. The debate usually comes from more fundamental dispositions. So, I mean, the, the example I see all the time is that if I ever go short uh, precious metals, folks that are bullish on metals tend to be a pretty passionate bunch. They tend to be a bit more dogmatic than, you know, if you've got a group that's, you know, bullish on energy, that's one thing. But the precious metals, that's almost like a religion. And so um, you, you get a lot of talk about, oh, the, the fiat money and the inflation and the collapse of the U.S. and all this other stuff. So you, you tend to get a lot more uh, uh, emotional debate about, well, why it's wrong, uh, why you're going to lose on that particular trade, as opposed to just outright debate on the pattern, per se. They're probably more concerned that a blogger who has access to thousands of other traders is giving an opinion that's opposite theirs. They're probably right. concerned. Well, <laughs> yeah. No, I think I think if you uh, have the visibility of something like someone like a Jim Cramer, that might be a concern. I mean, I've got a pretty big audience, but nothing that big enough to be influential. But I, I do think it's discomforting for a person to have a given position and have the person writing it, who hopefully they have some amount of respect for, be on the opposite side. But you know, as they say, that that's what makes a market. Well, are there other are there certain patterns that seem to be working well right now? Uh, are you f seeing more cup and handles? Are you seeing more head and shoulders in in ETFs or stocks that you're saying hey, this is a good pattern? I'm going to look for this more often. Yeah, the uh, the thing I'm seeing most regularly right now are let's face it, that push from March 6 to June 11 was a big one, and there were plenty of stocks that went up hundreds, in some cases thousands of percent when you're dealing with the real, like, penny issues and that sort of thing. And what I think that we're finding 
is that they've kind of muscled their way back to the underbelly of where they were back in around September. So it's not like they're at new lifetime highs, but they've, they've pretty much fought back most of the losses that they experienced during the bear market. And I think when you've still got so much overhead supply, and then you've got this sort of precipice between where they are now and where they were just a few months ago, that, that spells an interesting opportunity. And so I don't have much doubt in my mind that, that that's going to be uh, lost. I guess the, the huge debate, and this is you know, the, the kind of our, our economy's future almost hinges on it, is, is whether we're going to break, ultimately break through those March lows and, and see, uh, see a bear market that, um, you know, that we're in the eye of the storm right now and that we, we see the other side of this. Because I think that uh, the most remarkable thing that we've all witnessed together is the, the, how sentiment uh, changed so quickly. I remember reading how bullish sentiment had shriveled to 3% back in, in the March 6th bottom, and it didn't take long for it to approach nearly 90% again. Uh, so people have really jumped in with both feet, and for someone like me, that, that spells an opportunity. I was, I was going to say, I need to get 3%. You've got to be thinking like a contrarian there. I mean, yeah. there's just that, that's just the, the surest sign of a, a bubble or, or it's going to be, you know, the Armageddon is coming that, that you can probably see, I would guess. Oh, sure. Well, if someone, if someone is, is, is like Bob Prechter, who's a person whose work I respect, in March basically said, okay, bears, you know, everybody take a break. This is enough for now. You, you figure things are pretty low, and he was absolutely right. Yeah, the most bearish guy in, in the country oh, yeah. thinking that. Very it's, apocalyptic, yeah. Yeah, interesting. Well, we'll finish up with this. Uh, Indicator-wise, I don't ask a lot about it because you're you're talking mostly about patterns in books and your, your blog, but do you use MACD, stochastics, anything like that to help you as you well? You know, it, it's funny. Um, I, I, I don't use them much. In fact, I, I sort of tease my readers because from now and then I'll, I'll put up a chart with some of those things, and, and they'll say, hey, I thought you didn't use these. It's like, well, I like to... I, I'm, I'm just trying to appease those who want fancier charts because my, my charts tend to be uh, kind of devilishly simple. I'm, I'm really just after support and resistance levels. I like to use Fibonacci retracements. Uh, I like to use um, trend lines. What I do really could be done with a ruler from a dime store. I mean, this is not not sophisticated stuff. Um, I, I I find things like MACD and slow stochastics kind of interesting. But 99.9% of the time, all those studies are turned off. And on the bear side, I don't, I don't even really look at volume. I'm just really looking at those price bars and those nice straight lines, be they horizontal or tilted, uh, as, my, uh, as my guides for, you know, A, uh, what's the risk reward, and B, and this is so important, at what price is the market telling me that I'm wrong? And I think that's the biggest benefit of technical analysis. When are you wrong with your conjecture? And immediately, of course, get out. And do you find yourself wrong the moment it crosses one of those nice sloping trend lines, or do you give it some some play? I'm uh, I don't give myself a lot of wiggle room. I mean, if uh, uh, if if I see a bar which is forty eight dollars and sixty nine cents as the high, if it's forty eight dollars and ninety cents, I'm out of there. I don't I don't monkey around with that. All right. Well, of course, uh, we'll link to Tim's blog and uh, to the book, chart your way to profits as well. Tim, thanks very much for your time today. It was a lot of fun. Thank you. 